Tari. Good to see you and welcome. Likewise. Good Power morning. Happy there. New Year. Happy New Year. It's actually my very first time in this beautiful studio of awesome. yours. Awesome. Amazing place. And awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Since you no longer want to be known as Prince and you want to be known as Kwame. <laughs> yes. Then maybe let's start by you calling me Adishetu on the show because maybe somehow I love my middle name too. Okay. <laughs> Please repeat. <laughs> no further comments. <laughs> no, no for no no further comments. <laughs> if we're going to start on the pronunciations, we won't finish. It's Adishetu. 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 Yes. Okay. Simple. I think I got it. Adishetu. <laughs> At least you are trying. Good. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, talk about trying. Yeah. Uh, I mean, take it into consideration, in consideration where we've got into as a country. People no longer believe in the old adage of, look, let's get a leader who will just come and try. But someone who obviously would be able to live up to expectation. So I would want us to start from the state of despair Power in the country. Man. I mean, I'm sure you've spoken to a number of young people who would say that, look, I'm better off living in America somewhere or better of living in the United Kingdom than my own country. All because, once upon a time, someone said, try me. Yeah. And here we are. What's your own analysis of this? Hmm. You know, Prince, I, I shudder to think what goes through the mind of the ordinary Ghanaian. Yeah. And yesterday I saw a post Power on Mr. Kofi Asari's page mm -hmm. where he said that another 160 thousand mm. graduates as you watch uh, education watch yes, yeah. have actually been unleashed onto the unemployment list mm. one that we all know is already a very very tall list mm. one thing that encapsulates the despair that all of us experience is the lack of access lack of opportunity and jobs for our young people mm. Power and i'm sure that this the number he actually spoke to is just what is on the database mm. maybe those who have actually registered mm. maybe from the investors that are actually hooked on to edu watches own database that's right we haven't gone to the online the distance the private universities and all the many other people who are churning out graduates in this country mm. so ask yourself why would people not want to leave? Mm. I was at an airport recently, oh, and a young doctor that I've actually had a very long-standing, you know, relationship with, yeah. started screaming in the queue, Auntie Joyce, I'm also leaving, I'm also leaving. <laughs> He's a doctor, his wife is a nurse, and his wife had actually relocated some years ago. Mm. You know, you can't blame them. What happened to that policy of Ghana Beyond Aid? Mm -hmm. Why have we stopped speaking about the brain drain? Mm -hmm. Why have we stopped talking about knowledge exchanges? Mm -hmm. Why have we stopped talking Power about effect. less borrowing, about arresting the dollar, mm. about building an economy that all of us will be proud of? Mm. All these conversations, if you observe, have long since ended. Yeah. The silence is so profound that you wonder, why did we believe all of these tales? Highfalutin theories? Things that even we could not relate to, but somehow mm. we were willing to believe it. Yeah. It is what actually sums up that phrase, Somishe. Yes, Somishe. Uh -huh. yeah. Somishe. Try me. Try me. What were we going to try? Try based on the promises, based on the pledges, eight years down the line. But, but talk about, I mean, some of the issues that you raised with regards to high rates of unemployment, the various challenges in our educational system. When you were in government, uh, the NDC government, it was, it, was, it was a narrative that was there. I mean, the, the issue of unemployment. To the extent that we have a group called uh, Graduate Unemployed, unemployed, unemployed oh, Graduate okay. uh, Association. Yeah. I used to speak to them back then. I, I, I still, so, that, I, so nothing has changed. I still talk to them today. <laughs> and I ask them why they're not on the streets. Mm. Look, let me repeat something that Mr. Mahama says all the time. Yeah. Nobody says that things were perfect under the Mills Mahama administration. Mm. Nobody says things were perfect under Kufo Rollins period. Yeah. Nobody says could hold some of these government appointees or the government accountable. In Parliament we have the Government Assurance Committee. That could deal with instances 
of, of, of such nature that such as abandoned projects and failure to to deliver on promises. Kwame, do you remember when you and I went on that protest? Power the firm. The attacks you suffered when you started. True. You couldn't even find a place to lay your head. True. And I think at the time your wife had just had a very, very young yes. child. Yes. I remember vividly. Yes. And sometimes I tell people that people don't know mm. how things were in the aftermath of Mr. Mahama's loss in 2016. Exactly. You know, people like you are the reasons why we still go on. The sacrifice that you have actually made, mm. what you have lost, think about it. And there are many Ghanaians out there just like Power you. The fam. And it is a reason why, look, what has Parliament not tried to do? You know, sometimes mm. I don't want to overly blame the legislature. From the cash for seats, the motion for the removal of the finance minister, to the Ameri inquiry, to the commission on the audit reports that were coming with all the huge losses mm. were being made, mm. the summons of the procurement chief executive to parliament, the summons of the youth employment agency. I mean, so many of them, I shudder to think back. Fam. What has parliament not done? Mm. You understand? In terms of this um, gatekeeping, I think they've done a fantastic job. Mm. The minority in particular have done a human's job. Mm. We don't give them enough praise. Mm. We don't express our appreciation enough to them. They have held their own all of these years and gotten very little or no credit. In terms of you know, reporting on corruption, mm -hmm. what have they not done? Power you know, this them. morning I listened to one of your sister stations talking about the fact that, oh, you know, what is the opposition doing? Mm. Why are they not raising the issues? Why are they allowing the media to do their job for them? In the past, the minute the reports hit the streets about the Ford navigation, what happened? The media took it from there. Yes. They raised all the questions. Yes. Yeah. They raised all the challenges to do with the administration. Look, Mr. Mahama ought to be playing victim oh, right now. Mm. And for good reason. Mm. You know, a few days ago, I listened to a conversation about corruption about the corruption perception index, mm -hmm. about where we are on all the key mm -hmm. uh, facets of our peer review mechanisms. Mm -hmm. We are doing a lot worse. We are poorer for the new government that we went out there and selected. Mm -hmm. We are also poorer for the criticism and the level of, you know, how we lowered the bar so that we could receive this new administration. Mm -hmm. It started Power from the, the plagiarized fair. speech, if you remember. That ought to be the icing on all the cake we have been forced to eat. Remember Mr. Keno mm -hmm. on why they would never go back to the IMF? Yes. The Wachi and Kenke party, we looked on askance, happenstance, perchance, however you want to describe it. We have gone 360 degrees. Mm. To what? Mm. Just pure negativity. We are currently on 57 Power billion Ghana cities. Mm -hmm. 57 billion. Ghana cities. 5.7 billion. billion dollars. Yeah, yeah dollars, yeah. In um, our public debt. Yeah. With nothing to show. You have watched how these monies have been squandered. So, yes, they brought us what? An investment banker mm. with investment networks, mm. with opportunities to borrow money. He has gone on a borrowing spree borrowed us into a huge oh, abyss mm. but when you when you go out there in your tour uh, Pre president Mahama's building the ghana we want tour, do you get a sense of appreciation that ghanaians a large number of ghanaians are beginning to pinch themselves into reality and figure it out for themselves that look this is the mess we are in we need someone to save us you know kwame i'm one who believes in words i believe in letters everything i carry has a message for me as a person first. And it is Power how I fair. carry and conduct myself in the grace that God has offered me. I have a book that says, this is my diary. Yeah. And every time, if you notice, I have them very yeah. strong colors. Yeah. <laughs> they speak volumes. I used to have a purple one. Everybody mm. knew it. Mm. And when I lost it on one of the tours, it took me like months, mm. but I made sure that I found it. Mm. And I believe I had my name inscribed mm. in it. So someone found it somewhere and returned it all the way to Accra. This is my current one. It says be real, yeah. be, be humble, humble, be, be true, true, be honest, honest yeah. be happy, be unique. unique. Power be
Mr. Mahama has his very unique qualities. No human being is perfect. None of us are perfect in the sight of the Lord. But there's one thing I say about Mr. Mahama. It is his level of humility. His understanding and appreciation of what makes life tick. Look, daily, you'll be surprised the interventions that Mr. Mahama makes in the lives of ordinary Ghanaians. As an opposition leader? I ordinary, just... ordinary wow. Ghanaians. Wow. Ordinary. Power you wake up in the fair. morning and you receive a phone call. JB, can you reach this doctor for me? I have this patient from here mm. who needs to see so, so and so mm. and so. As I speak to you today, I'm sure that most of the top surgeons at Kolebo Teaching mm. Hospital mm. have become my friends because of the numbers of persons who require medical interventions and that Mr. Mahama oversees superintendents daily. Wow. You know, none of us are perfect. People will say all that they want to say. There's always that public perception and maybe some events will allow that perception Power to fester. Remember, why were we so big on health infrastructure? Mm -hmm. Talk to people who have had a crisis, who have needed emergency medical attention and have gone to the University of Ghana Medical Hospital. Ask them what their experience has been. Mm -hmm. If not for the few human issues, the equipment there, is top notch mm. first class mm. talk to people who have gone to the bank hospital for example mm. i had to pay for a theater Power at the my time hospital mm. because at the time we we're in lockdown and my son needed to have the metal in his knee refitted so he couldn't go anywhere else we had to look for a doctor here in ghana he said madam we have to go to the my time hospital because there they have the equipment and we'll be able to do it and do it quickly mm. this is the sort of ghana we all want to have mm. imagine kolebu looking like the University of Ghana Medical Hospital. Why has President Akufuado not been able to deliver that? Mm. Why has his Vice President not been able to spearhead that? If Mr. Mahama had stayed on for another four years, I'm sure today, Kolebu would have been stripped and completely refurbished. There's the argument of we could have done better, but for external shocks, COVID and Every the rest. Every human being could have done better with hindsight. With hindsight, there are so many things all of us, even in our private lives, could and would probably have done differently. Mm. But we don't have that hindsight now. What we know is that we were promised honey, we were promised butter, we were promised margarine, we were promised juice, we were promised everything that we all imagined. And in eight years, we have gotten poorer. Look. But they never expect. You know, look. If we lived in a fairer society, what would you expect? that a successor or predecessor president will acknowledge no matter the circumstances i've heard a lot of crazy things that have Power come out of the malema speech yes we forget that the guy spoke for nearly one whole hour mm -hmm. said a lot of amazing things mm -hmm. he even had a fantastic metaphor mm. of the example of what happened in liberia mm. from where he came here straight mm. where the president had taken ill mm. in the course of making his inaugural speech mm -hmm. but he had hope in the, in younger, the younger person who was his vice president yeah. and he anticipated that the president will at least pass on his wisdom and knowledge Power to his vice man. president so that he would continue so mahama is not an old man mm -hmm. by any standard mm -hmm. if he had even served his second term he would have left office as one of the youngest to be leaving office in the category of 60s mm -hmm. most people in africa start to attain recognition or even attention to lead a country when they are way past their 50s. True. It is just the culture. People expect you to get to a certain level, to have attained a certain age. It is why the framers of the 1992 constitution pegged the age at what? At least 40. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes. It is not necessarily because the adage is that life starts at 40. Mm -hmm. It is that in Africa, we just expect that people mature at a certain level. Mm. At least by then you'd be married, you'd have children, you'd have raised, mm. you have a job that you've taken it to a certain level, yeah. you've managed a business to a certain level. It is the expectation. So at least life experience. Absolutely. Mm. It's what people expect. So mm. look, I want us to pick normally the lessons in everything. Great human beings are not great because they acquired greatness. And like somebody Power said, few people are born leaders. Mm -hmm. We all learn leadership. Mm. We acquire leadership. Mm. We acquire knowledge as we go along. Mm. What have we acquired since Nanado and Baumia assumed the reins of leadership? We've realized why African governments fail. They fail because of the lies. Mm. 
they fail because of empty false propaganda and lies against a predecessor administration that they want to remove from office. Mm. So they oh, must, damn. at all costs, malign you, destroy everything that you hold dear. And in Mr. Mahama's case, because they also had a huge social media presence, the falsehoods, the misrepresentations, the fake stories and the lies were so orchestrated that you even started to think that they ought to be true. Yeah. Look at the record of corruption. Look at the handling of corruption. Yeah. And this morning I said that the whole matter of Madame Cecilia Dapa yeah. sums up how corruption has completely destroyed Mr. Akufalo. Uh, and you're looking at, looking at it from what perspective? The inability of the special prosecutor to get to the bottom of the matter or the seeming uh, defense put up by the president. Why? Have we not all come to the conclusion that Mr. President is a clearing agent? He says he's not. He says he, rather he allows the state agencies Power to do their work. Them. They come out with a verdict. Do you, not him. do you remember at the swearing in of the very first special prosecutor? We do. The Honorable Martin Amid, Yes. You heard what the president said. Mm -hmm. Has he lived up to the words he spoke at that particular swearing in? You remember his words? At the time when he was swearing the second special prosecutor, mm. has he lived up to those words? Mm. You remember his play to use the announced principle? Yes. Has he lived up to your expectations of that usage of that principle? Have you observed a oh, commitment yeah. beyond lip service and tokenism of Mr. Akufado to fight corruption in the manner in which he pledged to do? Have you seen that his peers? or that the reviews by civil society organizations and anti-corruption agencies, how have they rated his attempt to fight corruption? That, do these conclusions today justify the criticisms that he leveled against his predecessor, Mr. Mahama? Power do you think that the performance of Nana Akufuadu and Baumia today justifies the conclusions that they arrived at. Mm. That they even try to convince Ghanaians to believe them. Mm. Today, go out onto the streets of Ghana. Ask every 10 people you meet mm. whether they believe that Nana Akufado has succeeded in his attempt even to fight corruption. Mm. And you'll see the responses that you'll get. Look, nobody was in any cahoots about how Madame Dapa's case was going to go right from her resignation to the response she received from the president himself. Yeah. He had even hoped and anticipated that her integrity would be restored. Mm -hmm. A human being's integrity, whether or not they possess it, is not a question of law. It's a question of fact. Mm. How do you go to court to prove somebody's integrity? Mm. But what has happened? We've seen the special prosecutor himself now express his own frustrations. Not just with himself or his work, but even with the outcomes. Mm. And what has he been told? The ruling says, return to her immediately. Yeah. All her assets, all her monies, release the bank accounts. Have we not seen the president's words come to pass? But how is that the president's fault? I mean, Matros was before a court of competent jurisdiction. And, I mean, it played out. And here we are. People are banging their hopes on Yoko. You, 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 are, you are downplaying the role oh, of Yoko in all this. Why? Where was Yoko all along? Where has Yoko been since the Office of Special Prosecutor was created? Much to the excitement of President Akufado and all who think like him. Mm. Where was Yoko? Where was CID? I'm sure you listened to the former senior police officer, Agozo, mm -hmm. yesterday. Yes. He said what they do there is a joke. He has never seen that criminal investigations can be carried out in the manner in which they are being carried out. Mm -hmm. You've heard the debates by the lawyers even in this matter. Power the fair. This is where we are. Mm -hmm. And yet we have in charge of our affairs a man whose biggest credential was that he was a human rights practitioner. And what is your group in all this? The Ghana Bar Association. I remember when you were in government, I used to read your statements on air almost <laughs> every, oh. every time. Right from Rollins, right through. Absolutely. So where, yes. are they, where have they been in all this? I, I am not sure what is happening with the Ghana Bar Association. 
I don't know whether it's the levels of activism, Power, whether it's the nature of the leadership, whether it's some inertia, whether it's that they are so, so content with the prevailing hardship that they are unable to see that there's anything wrong. Mm. But there's something funny that happened a few days ago. Mr. Isankoma, my roommate's brother, declined to serve on a committee that had been set up to go out there yeah. and shop for a new coach. Yeah. That should tell you something. When has Mr. Isankuma ever refused to do something for President Kofado mm. or declined to do anything? Power, the there are no reasons given for his reasons for mm. declining. Mm. But it's left to us to decide why and why not. He speaks volumes. Look, my brother, I don't know how they say it in Chi. My mother says, Techi Deno. Exactly. Yes, my mother likes this other rendition. Interesting. Yes. So that that is the whole point. Why? Look at all the stories in and around graft or corruption. Yeah. Look at in terms of the economy. And today you've seen. Mr. Tekpe is out there touting mm -hmm. the positives of the homegrown solution that was put in place. Mm -hmm. That had actually posited that the economy in 2017 was Power going to grow by 8%. Yeah, and, and confirmed by and the confirmed World Bank. by the World Bank yeah. and many other of these Bretton Woods yeah. institutions. And at the time when Mr. Mahama went to the IMF, he went there for what? Policy credibility. Exactly. Give us the assurance that these are the policies we intend to implement. That once we receive the support, this is what we intend to achieve. So we had the energy sector levy that was put up. Mm -hmm. Where is it today? We had the heritage fund, fund that yeah. was put up. Where is it today? Yeah. We had the legacy yeah. account. Where is it today? Sinking fund, stabilization yeah, fund. All of that. Where are they all today? I, I'm sure, I'm sure. If there is anything that mm -hmm. we must give credit for, it is that this country was on the right trajectory. That the reasons that were ascribed for why we needed this great change in 2016 have fallen flat. But I find it curious our inability to gain some form of accountability re with regards to all these funds, these legacy funds that could have salvaged our situation. And again, I go back to the argument that the, the executive is not operating in isolation. They have a, 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 an arm of government that should serve us a check. I see. When they came and decided to cancel the uh, road tolls, mm -hmm. were there any consultations? No. The person who stood on the floor of parliament and did that, was he not a member of parliament? He was. Was he not a member of cabinet? Yes. Think about it. There is just so much impunity. So in instances like that, what do we do as, as a nation? There were oh, serious okay. protests even from parliament. Mm -hmm. What were we told? That they were going to convert the two booths into public toilets. Yeah. And it hasn't happened. And how much noise did you hear from the media? Well, for, I can talk about myself. Exactly. <coughs> Not many voices, mm. save a few. And that is the point I'm making. The media will now sit today and you hear some of them pontificating. How have they received the attempts by the NDC to fight corruption? The attempts by the minority to fight corruption? How have they reported the screaming headlines of plain thievery in our country? Even with the SML Dear, issue, yeah. recently, the latest in all the corruption scandals. How, look at it, look at your stories today. Mm. That the president even gives them what, an extension of time mm. for the audit to be carried out. And the same headline tells us that he says that they, they, you know, they should not continue with the with the SML agreement until Power the audit the is completed. Mm -hmm. So it is the audit that will determine whether that agreement should be cancelled or not. Yeah. Why? As a believer in democracy and good governance, in situations like this where the citizenry is pushed to the wall and then the various machinery that must work in our favor are trampled upon, what else can we do? Kwame, why do you think that is the case? We have a former commissioner of police Power the fair. who goes out there to contest brazenly in the MPP primaries. 
it is his constitutional right so to do. But he has just left the police service. What kind of police officer do you think he was mm. when he was in the service? We have a GRA boss who was going to contest. Mm. A controller. Uh, uh, yeah. Control yes. And he's returning. Yeah. I'm waiting to see how the court will decide this matter. I used to be a public servant. Yes. A Power director affair. for legal and estates. When I arrived as a deputy minister, I had not gone to contest. I was in the posting outside of Ghana even when I was invited back mm. to serve in that capacity. Mm. My first tenure, they gave me two years without salary, which is what our conditions of service says. Mm. Second one was another two years without salary. Mm. And then suddenly it was time for us to leave office. I received a letter asking me to resign mm. because I'd taken the first two years and taken the second two mm. years. Did I contest Power for an election? Affair. No. No. You understand? True. But this was my feat. I took it quietly and thought, okay, that's all right if mm. that's what they want to do. Mm. Why are the rules different for some and different for others? Who sets these rules? I'm sure there are standards. Every institution has standards. But the question I'm asking now is that how are they returning to work? Mm. I know the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority also had similar examples. Because mm -hmm. at the time there was a head of legal who went to contest somewhere in Agogo. Yes. And she came back, worked oh, until she retired. We have another one who was contesting somewhere in Sojama. He was still at the post. Yeah. And of course, until recently, I think he's lost the primaries to Pius Ajide. Look, to reset these institutions, as Mr. Mahama says, mm -hmm. will not be a joke. Most of our public and state institutions have been turned into bedrocks of political activism like never before seen. In the days when Mr. Mahama was in office, or Professor Mills was in office, try getting a CEO to come to a radio station mm. to defend government or to participate in a newspaper review program mm. or any of the morning platforms. that mm. You've been with us for mm. a long time. Mm. <laughs> I was in the ministry as a deputy minister. We had about 16 agencies. I didn't serve on any board. Mm. I remember it was towards the tail end. Mr. Mahama wanted to do some work at the shipyard, for example, mm. that he invited myself and the then Deputy Attorney General mm. to serve on a small committee that he had formed to try and see if we could get oh, some investment it. into the Tema dry dock and shipyard. Yeah, yeah. That was it. Eventually, even he decided to attach it to the Ghana Post and Harbors Authority because he envisaged that the port expansion would also require a very good maintenance uh, arm, so it would be important for GPHA, which had a strong balance sheet, yes. to try and invest in the uh, shipyard so that at least we could bring it to standard to serve the, the, the new port mm. infrastructure. Mm. What control did we have? What discretion did we have short of being in charge of implementing President Mahama's policies or Mr. Mills's policies regarding what happened in the ministry? Apart from the oversight, my former boss, may so rest in peace, yeah. didn't serve on any of the boards. Yeah. I didn't serve on the boards. Sometimes I even wonder what was going on at the time. Wow. I, I, I have started some research into some of these things. Why there's this seeming utmost control mm -hmm. that these ones exert on various government institutions and agencies that somehow we were given the impression that we were not allowed to do the same. Mm. I saw issues to do with many of these governance mm. challenges. Mm -hmm people's ages, the nature of the appointments, yes. the level of political activism of mm -hmm. some of these appointees mm -hmm. from the top to the bottom. bottom yeah. You saw what happened even in this election a few days ago. Absolutely. Listen to a district, or is it, did he say municipal oh, returning officer? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Saying he had forgotten himself. Yeah. He was saying, if I, let me, let, let's, let's okay. refresh the memory of our of yeah. our viewers and i don't pay me boy now honorable george bauer kasafa easy official now now we just see peace and work and say oh a car then come back and cook do now you really know me someone when you saw video already mommy not yet mobile just to refresh our memory and 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 have uh, uh, uh more empirical evidence war near honorable george bauer a catcher tiwi so, oh, I'm Mr. Isaac Akutu Dako. I'm the officer, district officer, election officer for NADOP. 
municipal election officer. <laughs> Thank you. So I've enjoyed my stay so far working with all of you in this municipal and thank you for your cooperation all the time. I don't have the opportunity to express my gratitude, but today I'll use the opportunity to express my gratitude. Thank you all. All right. You know, for a moment, as a referee, when I picked the mic, I was tempted to say Kukrudu. <laughs> but as a referee, you know, I have to play by the rules. Yeah, so I pretend. <laughs> Okay, so my job here is very simple. We are here to acclaim the only standing aspirant. Eh, it's okay. Thank you. Anyway, where is your official? I mean, probably you spoke in a joke, or? Power. My brother, this is very serious business. Matters to do with democracy. Mm. Matters that hinge on democracy. They have a tendency to destroy a whole country. Mm -hmm. We've seen it across the country. They have a tendency to generate enormous conflicts of a kind never before seen. Mm -hmm. And in our nature of politics, where we have a two-way street, the NDC and MPP, yeah. everything in between is game. What is it that the Constitution enjoins the Electoral Commission to do? Power. It actually delineates the Electoral Commission as an independent yeah. constitutional body. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. It is the reason why EC commissioners and chairpersons are given enormous respectability and discretion within which to do their job. Mm. All they need to do is to be sure that as arbiters, as returning officer, they must at all times bear in mind that there's a very thin line between democracy and conflict. Power. So even if you want to lighten up the mood... You're not to make this is very serious business and comments of this nature. If I were even the one being acclaimed, I would not be expecting the returning officer to create any fun mm. or poke any fun mm. or use such a high platform with a tendency to generate enormous controversy mm. as a playing field. Look at his whole body language. Mm. He should tell you that he's not there as an officer of the EC. And I would have been expecting that by this morning the EC should immediately have sacked from the job to send a signal mm. that they intend to set up. I'm happy that this morning our representatives, our General Secretary yes. Fifi Kwete mm. and Dr. Omani Boama, currently Director for IT, IT and, and, and elections. elections, will be going to the IPAC. Okay. I'm hoping that this is a matter that will be raised. I'm hoping that the New Patriotic Party itself would eschew and condemn such behavior Power from district, man. municipal, whatever. Look, Kwame, there's something we don't talk about enough. In 2020, mm -hmm. our electoral commissioner announced the results three times. True. On each occasion, True. the numbers were altered, they were amended, they were reformed. In another place where people do not respect democracy, where our leaders do not have control over their followers, this country would have gone Power completely, yeah. completely, completely down the drain. Yeah. We must at all times in these jobs remember that it is not about complacency or arrogance. Mm. Kwame, how many qualifications do all Ghanaians possess? Mm. These days there are no jobs. So every mm. time you meet young people, they are in school. Mm. Hmm. Every time you meet young people, you are at school. Because they want to meet up the, the new standards. They are, they are, are trying yeah. exactly to improve themselves as yeah. they wait. Yeah. They are trying to acquire new knowledge, new yeah. skills as yeah. they wait. When have you heard such huge celebrations about people going back to school for further degrees mm. and further qualifications? Mm. Mm. You understand? Maybe you look back on it and think, oh, how? But that is the truth. What are the options do they have? It is not because you are the best the most qualified that you occupy that position. It is because at this moment in time, it is you that has been nominated or selected. Yeah. There are many people with better qualifications who probably will do a much better job, who are probably better qualified, better placed. But at this moment in time, they are not in charge of the electoral commission. Mm. In everything you do, like I said, in my dress, in my choice of colors, in my choice of words,